Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. I'm an application developer. Today we're going to go over using Power Apps for your application development. Power Apps is a low code, no code, but can even be a pro code development tool. We're going to create a completely custom Power App with a new form, gallery, table, design. Let's get into it. Normally, for every Power App, I follow a three screen approach. And you can change this and adjust this as you get used to it. But normally we have a home, a home screen, and then a gallery or a table where you can view all the data. And then a form where you can fill out the data, where you can create new, or you can edit a line item in the data. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna decide if the app is, is responsive or not. It's either going to be desktop, mobile, or for both. Today, we're going fully responsive. So both desktop and mobile. All right, so we're on a blank Power App now. And if you notice here, we have a few different types of screens we can use. And it even highlighted some templates that we could use also. So these are kind of the same button in just different places. We have our templates. And we also have our new screens. Kind of the same thing. But if you notice that some of these say preview, preview, they're, they're just kind of new right now. And you notice that they show mobile and they show the desktop version so all of these templates are going to be responsive right these are the ones that resize themselves down here these are going to be i would consider these the older templates that we have but we still have some of them like calendar meeting the portrait print is actually very important that we still use but these are not going to really be responsive right out of the box so what i'm going to do is let's stick to that three screen three screen prototype. The first thing we want to do most likely is actually to start at the end. That's just my opinion. I'm going to start at the end. I'm going to create the form for our data first. This is our front end. This is where we want our front end to, to be. What is your back end? So there's options out there, right? There's Excel. Most people are going to tell you don't use Excel with Power Apps. You have SharePoint. SharePoint comes with select licenses. Then you have Dataverse. That's Microsoft's new uh, SQL in the cloud kind of it's the new place it used to be called the common data service maybe you have SQL in the cloud maybe you have SQL on-prem so once you've decided your data source now you need to connect your data source to your power app so I'm just going to create a very simple basic table in SharePoint and the reason I'm going to choose SharePoint is because this is where I'm comfortable this is easy to me it comes with my Office 365 subscription. So I'm just gonna go click New List and I'm gonna create a new blank list and we'll call it um, Andrew Hess Tutorial. All right, so we have a very basic, this is gonna be our backend now. We're gonna use SharePoint as our backend. Now you can use Dataverse if you want. You can use uh, any backend that you want. I'm not gonna tell you which backend you should use. Uh, that depends on your business and your business requirements. All right, so now that we've created our backend, now we need to connect our data. So we're gonna click on the data tab over here. It looks like a, a cylinder, it looks like a little cylinder. And we're gonna click add data. And normally I just search for SharePoint. I search for SharePoint. Uh, it's gonna ask for my credentials. If you don't have a connection yet, you need to sign in with your credentials. Okay, so now that we've connected our data, I'm gonna go back to the layers uh, tab here. And I'm gonna do a new screen, and I'm gonna do this one right here, this new responsive. So this is responsive. You see the phone and the desktop. I'm gonna do a responsive header and form. And it's gonna pull in here, and it's already asking me, hey, what's the data source for your form? And I'm just gonna drop my form right in. All right, so we have a nice form already. I'm gonna get rid of attachments. Uh, every SharePoint list item comes with attachments. You can turn this off. I'm just gonna delete attachments. All right, so we're back to our form, but it's not responsive yet. You may think it's responsive. It's not responsive yet. If we hit play and we change to the phone mobile view, it's not responsive yet. So what we need to do is we need to go to settings, display, and we're gonna turn off lock aspect ratio and scale to fit. It's gonna allow it to respond whether it's tablet mobile or desktop version. So when we hit play, 
we can see now it fits into our screen. So let's take a look at it on Canvas. So what I like to do is I like to come to Screen Container 1 and hit the Align Horizontal Center. So now that it's resized itself and made itself smaller, it looks good here, but if we go to the phone view, now it doesn't look good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the header container one and the width property, I'm gonna say if screen two dot size, that's the screen we're on, is equal to one. So one means mobile. So you have one, which means mobile, two and three are for tablet, and then four is for your large Canvas app. So if it's mobile, then I wanted to say parent.width, else it's parent.width divided by two. So if it's mobile, I wanted to take up all the screen. If it's not mobile, then just take up a, a portion of it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the main container one. So now when I press play, it takes up the entire screen on mobile. And then on canvas, it takes up only a section of that screen. So now we have our nice form. We could put in a, a really great background. So this is looking like Microsoft Forms, right? So let me get a nice background, maybe something that I create with AI, and I'm gonna put it on the background of our screen. All right, so in my screen two, I just uploaded a background image, and I'm gonna say fit to screen, maybe stretch, we'll, we'll say fit to screen. And then on the screen two, on screen container one, I'm going to change the color to clear to give me a nice background image. And maybe on the form, on the form container, I will change the color. All right, so now that we have our form fitting in there, let's just make sure that everything's right. So the minimum height, the minimum width, I'm gonna lower the minimum width. I'm gonna lower it. I always like to lower the minimum width, that way it just fits in there. And you can see that our form now fits in there nice and beautifully. We can change the color palette. So right here, the color palette, we can change it to like a turquoise or a green maybe like an orange to kind of match the theme here. We have our header. We can rename our header. So just kind of click in here on the header part. And you can see we have title up here and this is volunteer form. So now we have our volunteer form. We can have a logo here if we would like. So the logo, uh, we can do a stock image. We can find a logo. Maybe our logo is just the same image. We put our volunteer logo right in there also. So we have our nice form, it's responsive, it fits in here well. We can't go to new, but one issue that I did notice, during Power Apps, you can always hit Alt to interact with your app, right? So you can interact with your app here, but with my name, your name, the people picker, it's not working. And this is modern uh, Power Apps combo box or people picker. What you need to do is let go of Alt and then select the actual data card, so data card value seven for me, and do edit fields, add fields, and put in the display name. So now when we search on that um, field, we can see that now we have actually have people's names in there and they're being populated from our display names. Okay, so we have the form. So the next screen is actually going to be the gallery or table. So once again, I'm gonna do new screen, and let's see, we'll just do header and table. We'll use this template now. All right, so it's gonna create the header and table for us. So once again, the table is looking for data. We'll just drop that right in here. So now we're gonna use a table instead of a gallery. All right, so we have no data in here. Let's create a button, a button press, to so we can create a new line item. So. For me, I like to put my buttons in the bottom right corner of my Power App. So right down, right down, right here. So right here, I like to put my buttons right down in here because when you're on your thumb, right, when you're, you're doing mobile, normally my thumb is right there really close. So I like to put my buttons right there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another um, container in my screen container too. So I'm gonna insert a horizontal, horizontal container. All right, and this container is actually going to, let's see, I want my main container to take up a lot of the space. We have fill portions here. I'm gonna say it takes up five, maybe six. We'll go six of the space, maybe we'll go eight. And then for this container down here, 
I'm going to lower the minimum height. I'm going to say 50, maybe even less, 30. There we go. Just so it kind of makes it even smaller. And then in my container one, so this is the container I added, I'm going to insert a button. And this button, I'm going to align to the right. So align to the right, nope, not the text. In the container, I'm going to justify on the end, or I'm going to make a padding on the right side, maybe of 50, and maybe then we'll center it. So now we have our button there, and this button is going to create new. So we're going to say new. In the text field, in the text right here, we're going to say new on select. So when we press this button on the select, when we press this button, we're going to say new form, form one. So we're going to say new form, form one, and then we're going to navigate to our screen two and make sure you get this right. With a comma, we're going to say fade. So I'm going to press play, new. It's going to navigate me here. We're going to test. We're going to put in my name. Actual hours worked is eight. Start date was today. And I noticed that we had a little issue. When I selected a date, it kind of skewed everything off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to each one of my cards here and I'm going to say with fit and turn it on. So for each one of my cards, your name with fit, turn it on. Actual hours worked with fit, turn it on. Start with fit, turn it on and end with fit, turn it on. So it kind of resizes, it keeps everything in the center. So now when I select a date, we can select a date and pick it. And then it doesn't kind of mess up my sizing. And then I'm going to hit submit. Let's see if the submit formula is already there. So in submit, we have submit form, form one, reset form, form one. And then finally, I'm going to navigate, navigate back to screen three on a fade. All right, so let's press play. Let's submit. Navigates, we now have this line item in here. This is our test. Let's kind of take a look at this information here. So this was actual hours worked, start in the title. So let's do another one. Let's click new. Um, let's say um, animal shelter. So I volunteered at the animal shelter, Andrew Hess. Number of actual hours worked, 16. Start date was the 19th. And then I ended on the 23rd, hit submit. We now have our line item there. Now what I want to do is I want to make an edit button. So I'm going to come down here to container one, insert another new button. And this button is going to edit. And on select, we're going to do edit form, form one. And once again, we're going to navigate to screen two on a fade. And you see how there's no spacing in here? We're going to click on container one. And we're going to create a gap of maybe 100. That might be too much. Maybe we'll do 50. Maybe a gap of 50. So now we have our two buttons, new and edit. We can click edit. It then brings us to our form. But you notice there's no data in here. So what we want to do is we want to click on our form. So if you look on the left side, we're on our form one control. Every form has an items property. So the items property, so we clicked on it on the left side up here. You can also find it in advanced. Once again, you can find your items property right here on the right side also. Our items property is going to be equal to table one dot selected. So now it's bringing us to the one that we selected. So if we click cancel, Let's, let's edit our cancel button. Instead of cancel, let's say back. I would like to call it back. And it will reset form and navigate back to screen three on a fade. So let's try again. Press play, back. All right, so now we can click on a line item, shelter, click edit, and it'll bring us to that exact line item. We can then change it to animal shelters, put an S on there, submit, and then it updates the data source directly. We could probably rearrange some of the fields and remove the actual hours worked. So now when we press play, we see the line item. Maybe we'll change test, we'll edit it 
to where did we work? We worked for a clothing store. We can submit. All right, so we have a nice beautiful table. The final thing that you probably wanna do is make a home screen, uh, maybe with a header footer uh, template, we could do that. So we could do a header footer template. We could have a background, so we'd insert our background. We'd have it fill the entire space, the screen container three. We're going to make the color transparent so we can see that. Maybe we have you know some welcome text here. This is where our welcome text is. Welcome to our volunteer app. Uh, this would probably you know take up all the space that we have. At flexible height, you would turn on, and then you would make the font bigger. So the font size would probably be 100. Um, Lado black, and then we'd center it. So we'd have our nice welcome text. We could probably change the color to white. So font color is white, and then the actual container here, main container, we would change the color to see-through, right? So we'd have our nice volunteer app. We could then add our buttons in here, so insert button. The first button, the text will be new form, and the second one will be view all, view um, all. So the first button here, new form, will nav uh, do new form. Form one, and it'll navigate you to screen two. Screen two on a fade. And then view all will just navigate you to screen three on a fade. All right, so we have our nice app. It is responsive. The font is probably too large. Let's um, lower the font, maybe not 100. Let's try 50. There we go. We have our nice volunteer app and you have our forms. We can go to canvas size. We have a nice form. Maybe we want to make these containers see-through also. So we'll change the color to make them see-through. The color is now transparent. So now we have a nice home screen. We can click view all, go into the table view. We probably want a back button, but we can click new, do a new form, click back. We can select an item. We can click edit. We can then edit that item, you know, uh, for Andrew. We can click submit and now edits that item. We can create a new item, nice and beautiful, beautiful. We can add our name, Dr. Evil. He's gonna do some volunteer work, actual hours work. He's, he's evil, he only did two. We put in a start date, we put in an end date, hit submit. We now have a new line item. It's beautiful, looks good, responsive. We have a home screen, everything nice, complete, simple, responsive Power App. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess, and I'll see you next time.